most interesting away fixture since Germany played Russia in 1941. <laughs> and the United Nations are thinking of sending in a peacekeeping force. But are we overreacting? Could it be that there is a gentle and sensitive side to soccer fans that they don't ever let us see? Danny tiptoed out to test the water. It was on a chill, overcast September morning when it happened. At Football League headquarters, the draw was being made for the second round of the Milk Cup. The official hand disappeared into the hat and then produced two names that would send a shiver of fear ricocheting through the spine of the entire football world. The two names were Millwall and Chelsea. <laughs> Judging by the papers the next morning, it seemed as if nothing short of World War III was going to break out. But are Millwall and Chelsea fans the savages they're made out to be? Some of the regulars down at the den reckon the Millwall fans have just had a bad press. Deep down, they're a smashing bunch. Tell me about a, a, a typical mill sport in your eyes, then. Well, the average mills are poor as a diamond, Danny. And they're the type of boys that <coughs> would go out and buy their mothers a bunch of flowers and take Dad for a pint of beer. And even impartial observers are prepared to stand up and be counted. They reckon Chelsea fans aren't half as nasty as they're cracked up to be. Now, you actually drive Chelsea supporters about, don't you? That's right, yeah. Is it the dangerous job, it seems? No, no, not at all with this lot. They're like pussycats, you know. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll tell you what, the pensioners are more violent than them. Whatever they might look like, the fans reckon that, all in all, they've been hard done by. <laughs> They're really a cultured, sensitive lot. <laughs> tell me what you, what you do in your spare time and convince the nation that they've got you all wrong. I'll raise Shakespeare. <laughs> you really? Yeah, in great quantities. Are you a hooligan? Certainly not. No. What do you do in your spare time when you're not supporting Millwall? Press wild flowers. Mm. <laughs> well, if they're honest, they do admit that on occasions they can get a bit shirty. Do you find yourself verbally uh, <laughs> oh, in You mean abusing the referee? Abusing even the referee. Very many times. What do you say? Well, you mean on a really crucial decision? On a really crucial... No, don't be fearless. Oh. We don't edit this out. What do you actually say to him? You rascal. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a pulling out first like that, what on earth is it going to be like next Wednesday when they meet head on? To find out, we brought Chelsea and Millwall together on neutral ground for a dress rehearsal of the big match. All right, mate. Pleased to meet you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it was a risky operation, so we decided not to push our luck with a real match. Instead, we settled for something a little less likely to cause aggro. All right, Good game, please. Nice and clean. <laughs> <laughs> Tempers still ran high, but the <laughs> showed remarkable restraint. I say, referee, have a cow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dash it! <laughs> the lads were certainly on their best behaviour and the chance from the terraces wouldn't have been out of place at a netball match. <laughs> In fact, the Millwall and Chelsea fans got on so well with each other they decided to go for a drink together after the match. What's the order? Oh, how kind, thank you. Fingers. <laughs> well, here's hoping that the match on Wednesday will also be a piece of cake. <laughs> that was a very nice one, Danny. Uh, what, what do you think we'll be saying, though, this time next week? Is it oh. going to be a nasty one? Talk about Los Angeles or something. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I've sincerely have supported Mill for uh, 20 years. I've over 20 years. And people, it's funny when I go down there now, of course, everyone knows and I talk about Mill. And blokes do come up to us. I stand on the terraces and they come up and say, You've only been coming down here since you've been on the telly. So I say, How'd you make that out? And they say, Well, before you was on the telly, I never saw you down here. Yeah. So you say, Well, why should you recognise me, mate, before I was on the telly? I mean, you were supporting Millwall before you knew you were supporting Millwall. And that's what I like about me. It's easy to support Liverpool, Man United, in a big successful club. But the four or five thousand who go down Millwall turn up watch a grass grow. And there's something people can't understand about football. It's, 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 if you're involved with it and you're involved with a team like Mill, it's your team. And it don't matter if you're playing working and or all the dodgy teams we have to play because you know. In your heart, you know they're perhaps not the best team in the world, but you think they're the best team in the world, and you really do go... This is it. getting maudlin, I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> so, 
probably get rid of that mob. Which is... can I, can I, a... Sorry, can I just, uh, just on the light? I once saw a, a, a down there on the floodlights at a mill. There was a fella sitting sitting up like this, and he was obviously boozed. And there was a bloke with a flat cap on beneath him. And the fella, all of a sudden, because you do, the attention wanders down there. And all of a sudden, this kid went. <laughs> and he was sick over this bloke with a flat cap who stood there. Everyone roared and it was coming up his hat and he, he took his hat off and as he took his hat off, he went... <laughs> I'm glad we waited for that one. I'm 